Rebel Ford. The pros and cons of both of the vehicles. And I'm gonna start with the Winnebago. It's a 2019 Revel on a Mercedes Sprinter van chassis. Uh, it's the 2500 chassis. So these are the pros and I do it, I kind of broke it down in two different, um, like exterior and the chassis and then the drivetrain and interior. And, uh, and then I did the cons the same way. So let's just get right to it. I'm gonna try to keep from uh, boring you and and drawing this out too long. So for the exterior and the chassis, I have uh, as pros that it's very narrow, which makes good for going off-road and navigating through bushes and trees. Uh, it's got a, quite a bit of ground clearance for what it is, so that's really good. It has a lot of opening windows, so it's nice when there's it's cool out or you're in some trees, it can open them up, get some cross breezes. And with the max fan, it makes it nice. It has a ladder to the roof on the back door that you can move all the way around has an automatic awnings, just push a button and it'll go out and it has nice LED lights on it and stuff. Um, it has LED lights throughout the exterior as well as under the running boards. And that's another plus is that it has running boards and it also has a tow package. So next we're gonna talk about the drivetrain. These are still the pros. So um, the it's got the six cylinder Mercedes Blue Tech diesel, which is a very reliable motor. Uh, it's got the diesel exhaust fluid, so it makes it a little more environmentally friendly. It gets about 11 to 14 miles per gallon. I've gotten better and I've gotten worse. So this is literally the average. Um, it has an automatic transmission, push button four wheel drive with low range, which is another push button. And it has independent front suspension, which is great for like going around dirt roads that are washboard and stuff. And then the rear axle is actually solid. It's got BFG all terrains. Uh, they're 275s and they're on 17 inch wheels. So what I'll do is at the end of all this, I'll take a couple pictures and, and that way if you wanna pause it on the video, you can see what I have annotated and stuff. So we'll move on to the interior now. Um, well, one benefit is that it's all complete. You know, There's no work to be done there. Um, it's got the swivel captain's chairs up front. It has a dinette. It has window coverings, which is nice. So it has the shades, or you can pull it down for the screens if you have the windows open to keep bugs out. It has a max air fan. It has a high roof, so it's nice to be able to stand up. For most people, I mean, I can stand up in most things because <laughs> I'm not huge, you know what I mean? But anybody like six foot or above can stand, six foot to six four is a stand up, I think, in the, in the high roof sprinter. Um, as a kitchen sink, uh, sink and induction cooktop with a fridge built in. It has very well built, built cabinets. They're mostly wood, but like they're, the frame is done in welded aluminum, which is nice. As a shower and toilet combo, it has a motorized bed, so you can move it up to the roof if you want to bring it down to whatever level you feel comfortable, or if you have a lot of stuff in your garage, you know, you can put it down, like my mountain bikes are in there, so I don't even bring it to the top of my mountain bikes. Um, it has a roof AC. It has a lot of interior LED lights, um, USB plugs, uh, 110 plugs. So you have plenty of that. There's a lot of electronics in this and that can be a pro or a con. It also has an S bar heater and water heater. So, which is also a pro and a con. And, uh, and so it has a solar system it has two panels on the roof and two AGM panels two AGM batteries. So now we're going into the cons and we're gonna kind of do it in the same same sense, um, same order. So the exterior chassis, it's got a really high roof, which is a benefit, right? But it hits a lot of trees and there's a lot of stuff up there that I worry about, like my solar panels, the AC and stuff like that, you know? And when it gets lifted, it's gonna be even higher. So that's something that I have to take in a, into account. And right now, the body roll is insane on that thing. Like it's borderline made me want to get rid of it. It's so bad. When you go down like a washed out road or something and it just rocks so bad, it just whips things off the counter and it catches wind and just, I mean, it's, it's scary sometimes. 
And but the, one of the things that really upset me was we were going down the road uh, the other day, and it was swaying so bad, and I kept slowing down and slowing down, and it just tossed my dog off, and she got flipped into the little hallway and wedged in between the fridge and the bathroom and just laid there and couldn't get up and was whimpering and I was so upset like I thought I heard her she's 12 years old and it just really bothered me you know so I, I have to fix that you know what I mean I have to do something that fix that it really bothered me and uh, okay so it has a ladder to the roof but it's kind of pointless to go up there because there's no room like you have to wedge your feet one after another in front of the other just to be able to navigate up there because of the solar panels and everything else it's super narrow on top because if you ever notice that they kind of lean in like that they're not straight walls like some of the other vans are um so it has the automatic awning and i put that as a pro but it's also a con because i've already had to replace it from a motor failure and I haven't even used it that much. I mean, I've only had the van coming up on two years, so it's it's been a huge downer to have that happen. And it's happened to quite a few people too, from what I understand. Um, the running boards, it has them, but they suck. They're super slippery when they're wet. I've literally fell off of them twice. Once almost, like I sprained my ankle pretty bad, but it could have been a lot worse, so I'm thankful it didn't. Um, it does have the, and you can't use them for like rock sliders if they get hit. They've got LED lights underneath, you know what I mean? Which is sketchy. And then they hung the exhaust pipes just under them. So it's like, wow, like that now the ground clearance is even less. And then the S-bar heating um, exhaust on the other side is underneath that as well. So it's just, it's really frustrating. The tow package, um, it's a three quarter ton. So it has a good tow rating, but unless you have like a dual axle, trailer it sucks because you're only allowed to put 500 pounds on the tongue so the tongue weight being only 500 pounds there's not a ton you can tow unless you have a really good dual axle trailer and then you know if you have any more i mean you could be liable in an accident or something um the s bar is super loud as well like most people are having them moved out of the interior compartment and put under the hood but I mean, you're talking another $1,500 when you've already spent a ton of money on this vehicle. You don't wanna to have to pay for more just to make it not so loud. Um, there's no skid plates on it for being an off-road vehicle and not having skid plates at the price it was is a little disheartening. And I've replaced my windshield twice already, maybe three times, um, because it's so big, it just catches rocks left and right. Because of it, my insurance has actually gone up as well. Um, and the drivetrain, like I said, it is a six cylinder diesel, but a six cylinder diesel weighted down it like it's you're you're barely getting up hills, you know what I mean? And and like it, I've I've had Volkswagen buses and they're the same thing. You just kind of creep up hills and that's fine, but you expect it with like a Volkswagen bus. You don't expect to go fast anywhere, but I mean at the cost of these vehicles, you know, you expect it to, with confidence, to go up the hill, in my opinion, you know what I mean? So that could be a plus or minus, or maybe just a neutral, because that's like, oh, he's just whining, and I'm okay with that. But it has diesel exhaust fluid, which it, it is better for the environment, but if you don't have it and you forget to put it in, your vehicle will go into limp mode and pretty much leave you stranded. So that's like one of those things where I forgot one time to put it in, at the gas station and I got on the road. Luckily I had a two and a half gallon spare and people are like, dude, I carry 10, 15 gallons. I'm like, you know, that's an extra 80 to a hundred, you know, pounds for that to carry in there. And we're really close to the max limit empty. You only have like 1200 to 1500 pounds that you can put in the vehicle and then you're considered overloaded. And again, if you get an accident, you're screwed. You know what I mean? They're like, oh, well he exceeded the thing. and it's just asking for trouble. So, okay, so that was the exhaust fluid. It has the in, uh, independent front suspension, which is great for off-road for the, you know, for the washboards. But I mean, it's not very good if it gets really technical, you, like you start getting wheels off the ground and stuff. And they're still very capable, don't get me wrong. You know, I'm just kind of old school and I love solid axles where you can throw lockers in them, you know, and get a lot more articulation and they feel a lot more stable. Um, so, 
and the rear um, axle on this is a solid axle but because of the electronics you can't you can't put in a locker nobody makes it and I know that you guys may or may not have seen my video but I already got it stuck and it sucked because you know I'm sitting there and in the video you can see that one wheels not turning and the other one's just pss, 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 pss. and you know so in my opinion the electronics failed to do what they're supposed to do they're supposed to sense it spinning lock it up you know what I mean or distribute the um, power to the other wheel and it did not so you know I like to go out in the middle of nowhere and do stuff so and okay so that was another um, issue is the, the weight capacity and it having so much stuff in it that you're already close to it and that's not even counting just the water which is another I think it said 800 pounds or thousand pounds so now you're left with only being able to put another five to eight hundred pounds of your own stuff in there including human bodies so it's just it's just one of those things where it's like you know liabilities and like yeah I don't know that's you'll just have to get your own opinion on that so the interior the spare bed that's in the front it's pretty much worst case scenario because it's not I put on here that it's garbage I mean because it kind of is you know what I mean so it's already broken on me once it's uncomfortable it's it's awkward it's off-centered somebody put a video of how to make the bed better and basically all they did was build an entire frame and put a blow-up mattress on it I'm like you didn't make it any better you just basically rebuilt it so the passageway from the front to the back is very very narrow because the um the, the the seat to the dinette comes out a little bit so you might have I don't know I, I'm guessing 18 inches um, to get through there and it seems to be what everybody doesn't like because they feel claustrophobic when they go in that have that narrow passageway so that's another thing is that being in the bed it's kind of like you're enclosed there's only this much of an exit because you got the the shower and toilet on this side and then you have the um, like the what would that be a pantry I guess on the other side and you have a really small area like I have to do my shoulders like that to get into the bed um, so the shower and the restroom are for tiny people as well if if me or anybody over six foot goes in there to take a shower like you pretty much have to sit on the toilet to wash your hair um, again these are just personal gripes these may not be a reason that you decide hey you should go into the other one or you should stay in this one because you know the showers are kind of worst case scenario I guess and if you can take a shower it's a blessing you shouldn't be upset that you have to sit down and wash off I'm wondering if I even have to shower with the door open because I really don't fit I can't even use the toilet I have to leave the door open to use it so if there's more than one person it's like hey you gotta step out for a minute I gotta take care of business gotta go see a man about a horse you know what I mean so um, and then it has an induction uh, cooktop and it's glass and so is the top of the sink and I've seen a whole bunch of posts of people saying you know when they went off-road they opened the cabinet stuff fell down and psh, busted it and then there's a little spice rack right above the um, induction cooktop and I had my um, drone batteries charging on there and just on the road like it flew off and hit the duck house I thought it broke and it didn't but everything was scattered um, and then so too much electronics so my tire pressure indicator light is constantly going and like saying that they're low they're, they're not reading right they don't one of them doesn't read at all so there's only three tires working so it's just really frustrating on a new vehicle you expect it to work and then another electrical problem that I'm having which also may not be a big deal but like you can put your seatbelt in and it doesn't register so it just constantly beeps and that drives me insane man like I'm like stop it and then you start jamming it in there you're like shut the god dang it but then I just put on some dirty heads and I'm chill <laughs> Uh, so the roof AC is cool but this particular one you can only run it um, off of shore power or generator so when you're driving you can't have it on and you can't have it on when you're parked somewhere it doesn't run off the solar system so it kind of sucks that you have to carry a, a generator and there's no place to carry it on the Rebel 
on a lot of uh, other RVs and stuff, they have exterior compartments or under the chassis where they put one and you can run it, but this does not have that. And the bed is like, they call it like a little bit smaller than full. Sorry, I keep shaking the table. A little bit smaller than full, but it's pretty small. It's just bigger than a twin in my opinion. And you can go on a website, so give you the exact dimensions. But anybody who's been over six foot tall who slept in it has not slept comfortably because of the length. Even though they say that with the pop outs, anybody like six foot three can sleep in it. Um, I've noticed anybody over six foot prefers to sleep at an angle, which means that you're not gonna have any room for a second passenger or a middle to large size dog if you have them. So those are my general pros and cons for this. Um, That's just what I came up with. And another, I just wanted to give you this little, little tidbit of cons in my opinion. And this is something that I really had a hard time whether or not I was gonna um, divulge this in information, but people were like, don't do it, don't do it. And that tells me that I should do it because I, I try not to hide anything from anyone, you know? So check that out. Vehicle cost. The average of these things is $130,000. I didn't pay that. I paid like 112 and then with extended warranties and all that other stuff, it got up there pretty good. So it still wasn't 130 even out the door. Nonetheless, it's a lot of money. And just so you know, that comes out to about, like if you got a 10 year loan on it, that comes out to about $1,300 a month. And you know, that's a lot of money, man. Like that's a house. And I chose to sell my house and go into this knowing that I'd have my payment because I'm like, you know what? This is going to be my house. You know what I mean? So, um, one of the ball busters that I found out was, I know that we all have like annual registration. You know what I mean? I didn't know it was going to be $2,200 every single year, which pissed me off beyond no, I mean, I'm like, dude, like I, I can't even really, I haven't really even been able to do much this year because of COVID and it's just so frustrating, you know? Like that amount of money, is just sounds insane. And then the insurance costs $220 a month. It went up because apparently windshields cost a lot and me claiming them on my insurance, which I have glass coverage, you know, but whatever, it is what it is. And then you have a service A that's done at 20,000 miles that you have to get done in order for it to, to stay under warranty. That can cost you anywhere from eight to $1,200. And then service B due at 40,000, which is the same price. So every 20,000 miles, you're gonna have to do uh, a service that's gonna set you back quite a bit of money. So yeah, it's super frustrating, but I'm willing to do it if I'm gonna keep it and love it, you know what I mean? And then the cost of the upgrades that I want to do to it. So that was another thing. So if you guys want to see me stay in the rebel and do these upgrades, like, please tell me to do so. Like I'm leaving this all up to you guys. Like what you guys decide and it doesn't have anything to do with me. Don't think of me as like, Oh, well, we don't want you to have to pay that much. Think of it as like, I want to see this on your channel. So if I'm going to come watch it, I want you to be in this. And that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna, it's kind of like, what do you wanna see? And tell me, so that way I can guarantee to make videos that you'll come back and watch, you know? So some of the upgrades I'm doing is a suspension because I wanna get rid of that swaying back and forth and I want a little more ground clearance. Unfortunately, not too many companies make lifts and stuff for this. So it's gonna cost between six to $7,000 to get it and have it installed. And then it's going to be about twelve to fifteen hundred dollars for the new tires that are coming up soon because they're they're getting pretty worn down, and I'll be going up a size. And I'm going to put skid plates throughout because I want to protect my investment. So that's going to cost about two thousand dollars, if not just a little over, with installation. I want to do a rear tire swing. Um, that's about eight hundred to a thousand dollars, maybe twelve fifty, and. I have to do that first before I do this next one because I'm gonna, the next one is a extended travel fuel tank. Like, so you just have a bigger fuel tank. It's $1,800 plus install. 
But in order for me to do that, they kind of put it where the spare tire is now, so I have to do the other one first. And then, like, eventually I'll do a winch and a bumper. But so, the total, like, initial investment, I'm selling one of my vehicles to, to get all the money to do this, well, I'm selling my only other vehicle to do all this, is, uh, so the total cost is gonna be $13,300. So if you wanna see that Winnebago Rebel dressed up and all that, and me out there doing some nonsense like I do with, when me and <laughs> Town of Mob took it out, romping through the desert, like I wanna take it out. I wanna I wanna put it through some stuff. I don't wanna abuse it, but I wanna use it properly. Then let me know, cause I'll be more than happy to stay in this bad rig. So next, let's go ahead and tackle the 2001 Ford Ambulance E450. So the pros is that the height, it's about eight foot, five inches right now. So it's about a foot and a half maybe a little more shorter uh, than the Rebel. And it has a lot of storage compartments on the exterior. It has super solid, durable steps on the side. They're not like Nerf bars. They're not like rock sliders or anything like that. They're just regular. Um, all the Ford parts are cheap because it's a 2001 Ford. I mean, you can buy stuff left and right for it. You know what I mean? And most of the stuff you can just do to yourself. You know, there's no warranties or anything to worry about. Uh, tons of lighting. Has lighting all over it. It was an ambulance. So it's got all the scene lights and everything like that. All the emergency lights have been blacked out uh, per protocol when it's sold to a private party person. And it... You know the the paint and exterior is very durable i think it i think it might be aluminum i know the framing is aluminum i just don't know what the outside is that's painted the actual walls if it's a composite or but i'm pretty sure it's aluminum also let me see so it's not easily uh scratched or dented it's got a good windshield meaning like i just drove it from washington and normally in the Rebel, every time I go out, even just around a neighborhood or something on a, I mean, on a highway, like from Prescott to Chino Valley or to Flagstaff, I catch at least two rocks, which put another ding in it and it needs to be replaced again. Um, solid windows and doors, like they're very thick, insulated, all the exterior ones. So the compartments in there stuff won't freeze as easy. Uh, all the compartments on the exterior are easily locked with just a push button and it locks them all, which is nice, you know what I mean? It's the same as the Rebel, you push the door lock, but it's nice having exterior compartments that don't go into the um, main body of the vehicle that you can lock up with a push button. Uh, the top top of the box has a lot of acreage, so like if you wanna build the roof rack or a lot big, huge solar system up there, you could, um, which is nice, you know, there's nothing up there. It has Bilstein shocks all the way, it has a huge, huge, heavy duty sway bar, like Kevin Nichols at Nichols Auto Fab looked at it yesterday and he's like, oh my God, like that thing is massive. I'm like, I know, right? So, and then um, it already has um, an awning on it. It's just a manual one, you crank it out, which is nice, you know what I mean? Cause you don't have to worry about the electronics. And it's got a massive fuel, fuel tank. I don't even know that you could put one that size on the Rebel. I mean, I think it's like 60 gallons, maybe like fifth, between 50 and 60, so maybe 55, but it's, I mean, it's massive. It costed like 140 bucks to fill it up, I think is what I said earlier. Um, the drivetrain is a 7.3 liter diesel. It doesn't have any death. The 7.3 liter diesel is like, that's like the cream of the crop. And then to find one with only $50,000, like it's the uh, 50,000 miles. Um, that's like the unicorn, like that's super amazing, you know? You don't have any death fluids. You don't have to worry about it going in limp mode and stuff. It's an automatic tranny, front and rear solid axles. Um, so if you convert it to four wheel drive, you'll be able to put lockers in both the front. You can even put like a, what I would love to do if I had it, would put an Atlas transfer case in it and make it like really, really capable off road. You're not gonna do any rock crawling or anything by any means, but I mean, it'll get you where you need to get. Um, it currently has uh, Bridgestone 2 275 um, tires on 16 inch wheels and it has the dually rear wheels. Um, so they're kind of like uh, an AT, um, 
what is that called? Like the, the tread on them is, it's pretty aggressive. It's not like the normal ambulances that just have a, almost like semi tires. Like they're actually got a decently aggressive tread. So I'll, I'll let those wear down before I put any other ones on there. Um, and it bombs up hills. I mean, it's a 7.3. You could load it down as much as you want. It's an E450, so you can put as much weight in it. You can tow and haul anything. I mean, that thing's a beast. Um, the interior, it's tall enough for, I think it's like about 5'10", stand-up height in there. Um, so, uh, I mean, the it's not as high as the Rebel, but when you go inside a van, you don't just stand around in there most of the time. Everybody has a seat and relaxes and grabs a beverage or whatnot. <laughs> so, uh, there's tons of cabinet space, you know, all the EMS equipment that used to be in there. Um, so they're super durable. I mean, they've been in there since 2001. Well, I think the box is from 98, but the chassis is a 2001. So, I mean, it's withstood all this time and it's still in amazing shape. Uh, it looks to be like it's either metal, like aluminum, I think. So it's lightweight, got all glass doors. You know what I mean? It, it's cool. I like it. So the rear AC, it's one that you run with the motor. It's connected to the um, compressor on the engine. So when you're driving, it keeps it extremely cool. I mean, you can get it cold in the back, you know what I mean? Um, let me see. Tons of lighting, maybe too much lighting on the inside, to be honest, you know? When you're working on a patient, you're gonna want a lot of lighting, you know? And some of them I looked at, and I'm like, ah, I could just get the red caps for them and have some, you know, some red lighting for the evening. Um, so it has a couple cabinets inside that lock. So if you have like computer or something like that, or you don't want to be out or in a regular cabinet in case somebody breaks in, there are some locking cabinets. And one of them, there's even a little safe built into the wall, which is nice. It has a huge bench. And that's what I slept on when I brought it back from Washington. It was super comfortable, actually. It's just a little too narrow. So I can either build something to double that and use that as a bed. Or I'd like to just do a nice big full size platform bed so you're just like at home, you know what I mean? In a, in a nice queen size mattress or something like that. Um, it has a place for the fridge and a place for a sink and a cooktop and everything like that. I wanna do it very minimal. Like I just, I don't, I don't wanna overdo anything. I just want it simple, like maybe a little butane, single burner. You know, when I'm not using it, I drop it into a little compartment to store it. You know, maybe the sink will be built in, but have like a, a wooden um, chop block for a cover or don't put any cover that I have to worry about breaking it. You know what I mean? So that's what, that's really cool about it. Um, has a very little electronics, which I like, you know what I mean? And another plus is I can put a giant comfy bed in it. So some of the cons I have for it is that it's a two wheel drive. But with that being said, I've already, um, well, I don't, my buddy who bought the ambulance is giving me the opportunity to do it. He has a full uh, original equipment, bolt on four wheel drive kit for it. He's like, it's a Dana 60 front axle. It has a Ford transfer case. It's all gonna just button right up. You know what I mean? So I have access to that if I decide to go this route or if you guys decide you wanna see me rock this thing. Um, a con for it is, another con is that it's super wide compared to the Rebel, like the box is super wide. So we gave up height, but we gained width. I like it because we can put a big, beautiful bed in there and still have a bunch of nice cabinets and storage space, but it might be a little harder navigating through trails and stuff like that. So that's something that it kind of worries me, but Ah, that's all up to you guys though, really. Um, it's older, so, you know, it's not gonna have a lot of warranties and stuff like that, but it's also lasted this long that I don't know if that's really even a con, you know, that might be a benefit to some people because they can do all their own oil changes. Um, and then uh, another con is, it's gonna be a DIY build, you know, so, but with that being said, I'm not gonna go all out. It already has all the electrical, all the, AC, all that stuff in there that I don't have to worry about, you know what I mean? Um, speaking of the AC, it doesn't work when you're stopped either. So um, another con is I'm gonna have to cut out and put the um, max fan in there and maybe do a, an AC unit that I can run off of a, 
oh, and I have to do a solar, and I have to, and then I want to put in another AC, but I want the AC to be able to run off the solar, like maybe just a solar bank just for that, because everything else runs off of the AGM batteries that are existing now, and it does fine, so we'll see, you know what I mean? Um, I'm gonna have some, a little bit of demo to do, like there's some uh, IV ports and, not IV, but oxygen ports in there that are gonna need to be removed, you know, some old stuff that um, ambulance have that we don't need, you know, IV hangers and stuff like that. Um, so I'll have to remove that. Um, so on this one, the cost for me, and I'm just being honest again, I'm not trying to hide anything, I just wanna be honest with you guys. So uh, $11,000, the way it sits, is what he's gonna give it to me for. That's how much he has into it. And that's with paying me money to, to drive it down and fuel and everything like that that he has into it. Um, the annual registration is $80 a year. Uh, the insurance a month is $50 a month. Uh, like I said, I can do all the services myself and not to worry about uh, avoiding any warranties and I'll be debt free in a year if I go this route. So the things that I wanna do to this um, is I want to convert it to four wheel drive. So basically when I do the, if we go this route and I do a four wheel drive conversion, which you guys are all going to be a part of, like I'm going to, you know, record it all and stuff, excuse me. And I'll have that. I think it's like six grand and then it's going to be like two grand to get it installed. And, uh, and then I'm going to do a platform bed and then, uh, I'd like to do like an, ARB fridge like a cooler style because they can go into that locking compartment that I showed you guys in the video earlier and then uh, Some basic cooktop and water tank, so it's not gonna be a lot of build and with all that being done I'm gonna be right about 20 grand 22,000 For the whole thing and then um, So I should be like debt free within a year of having it and then you know I'll do some uh, tires when those go out I don't want to get rid of something that's good right now I'd like to put a roof rack over the cab with a nice solar panel a really good like high watt one so it'll charge the batteries maybe even even do like a lithium solar system so it can run that AC and then on the roof of the box do a full rack where you know I can take some lawn chairs up there and it'd be a deck as well so um, other than that a rear tire swing so that's it that's what I got guys whatever you guys want to see me do I'm so nervous because I'm like oh my god what are they gonna choose like but I don't care either way because worst case scenario is I'm in a cool rig and as always thank you guys for following Happy's Trails and I'm looking forward to your decision yeah buddy